the story, of course, crazy. at the moment is this a NHS scandal. Uh, still prepared to give puberty blockers to kids. Now, in case you guys, like me, don't really know what puberty blockers do, Ollie will tell us. Well, puberty blockers are given to kids. Uh, in some places, they can be as young as 11. And that is to stop uh, either a boy or a girl uh, becoming who they are bio biologically. So like a boy developing, you know, uh, masculine muscle and stuff mm, like muscle that. Muscle mass, hair. M and hair, that. exactly. Yeah. So if they give a boy uh, estrogen, yes. that will stop that process. And therefore that boy will develop uh, feminine features. Breasts. Uh, breasts. They will yeah. also grow breasts from mm. the puberty blockers um, mm. without the surgery. And, you know, it's just altering the body of a child. 11 years old, mm -hmm. you are not going to know what you want to do in the future. Mm. I don't care what any. It's not reversible says. either. It's not reversible. No. Um, mm. And you are interfering with nature. Mm. Um, yeah. And a lot of people will say, and I, I listen, I'm, I know quite a lot about this. And friends have been involved, and, um, and they just get on with their lives, mm. and they're fine, absolutely fine. But since it's become this huge talking yeah. point, and it affects a minority of a minority um, who are using it to get really upset and stressed and everything else. And one of the questions people people ask most, and I don't know whether you can answer this or not. I'm trying to think of a very sort of sensitive way of, of doing it, which is why I'm talking about nothing at the moment. But one one person once phoned in and said something along the lines, I don't understand this, James. If you want to be a woman and you like guys, why don't you just be a lesbian? That's a great question. I mean, you do have some men that do identify as lesbians. They're transgender lesbians. And you know, we've seen the case in Australia... Uh, recently with a man that was uh, not allowed on a women's app he said he was a lesbian he mm. wasn't allowed on a women's app and that has now gone to federal court and at the end of the day you know uh, women's spaces are women if you're a man attracted to a woman you know that makes you heterosexual if you identify as trans okay mm. but it doesn't make you a lesbian well they say they're a woman but they fancy women they're, even though they're in a man's body therefore they're a lesbian and they can therefore you know enter women's spaces and sport which is ridiculous mm. isn't it this is all mm. to do with the cast report which came out mm. earlier this yeah. week and I think actually uh, Helen Cass, I think is her name, uh, made some very good points in it. But she has been getting an enormous amount of stick from the so-called trans activists ever since. That's how they work, isn't it? Yeah, this report was groundbreaking, but it does tell us what we all knew already. You know, the people with common sense that this is harmful for kids. Uh, yeah. There are no uh, health benefits. In fact, it's making a lot of kids unwell. You can get you're... cancer later on in yes, life. Yes, there was a, another study recently that, that said uh, cancer was a risk uh, yeah. for kids taking puberty later blockers and hormones. Um, yeah. So there are absolutely no health benefits. You're putting a kid at mm. risk. You're putting them on these long-term drugs. You're changing their body. So the CAS report basically said, you know, what we all thought. And now what's interesting is you've had a lot of uh, LGBT groups like Stonewall and Mermaids, which was the one uh, pushing for transitioning kids they have tried to backtrack and say we never advised this we never said that kids should be medically transitioned even though they did these were actually they were lobbying for they were it grooming kids are some i'm not saying which you're but some were grooming kids who you know would be talked to a lot of them were, uh, were on why? the spectrum hang on uh, lots of people go through phases yeah. uh, you know at school you you don't know whether you're going to be gay or straight when you yeah. find out about these things um, and and so on into sort of uh, early adulthood, and your body changes as you grow anyway. It's become a fashion at school, and yeah, you get the attention. Teachers to... are actually, or have been, a lot yeah. of teachers have been sympathising and, and helping kids to do this, and they had no business being involved. Yeah, a teacher is not a doctor. They're no. also not the parents, so they have no business pushing this. Yeah, but they'll rise in their trade. If they agree with all that, they'll they'll be promoted. And if mm. you don't, this is how it's all working, mm. isn't it? There's a reward system. So, yeah, we, we see a lot of teachers do that. And uh, there was a study in the Netherlands that was published last week, a very big study, uh, thousands of kids from the age of 11 up until uh, past the age of 25. Mm. So that's the longest uh, study we've seen so far. That actually said that only 4% of those that considered themselves trans as a teenager they still considered themselves to uh, have a different gender identity issue up after the age of 25. So 96% so said they were wrong. 96% just go back to normal. They're absolutely happy. So that is a staggering statistic. But I remember they said like 30 years ago, only 20 people in the whole country were getting, uh, you know, um, uh, surgery or whatever, sexual uh, sex change. Well, but yet now it's thousands. It was nothing. When I went to school in the 50s and the 60s, yeah. um, there was no such thing. You know, there, you, you, you'd sort of... Yeah, Danny LaRue and that's it. You mm. sort of pointed your finger at blokes in the car, yo, you're one of them, aren't you? And all that sort of stuff. 
Uh, and you, you didn't even know about gay, straight or lesbian. Well, I, it was when getting towards the end of the 60s when mm. it, it, people live with it, it's fine, you know. If people actually did their history and mm. found out the law in this country, not a long time ago, back mm. into the 70s and 80s, where it was illegal to be gay, and then it was, oh, okay, you can be gay, but you can't have sex until you're 21, or something like that. That only changed in, like, the 90s. Yeah. And, and so the, the, yeah. the laws have been bizarre, but we have not helped kids to actually realise that all these things you go through mm -hmm. are quite natural. Yeah, absolutely. And some of these kids uh, may just be gay, they may be lesbian, and they just don't know at the yeah. time. Or but they feel being... ashamed that they're gay, and they go, I'm not gay, I'm, I'm a woman in a, in a boy's Exactly. Woman. But a lot of these kids that may be gay are being told that they're trans. So they're yeah. being said, you know, the reason you're attracted to girls or the reason you feel this way is because you're trans, and yeah. that is simply not the case Same at with tomboys. Exactly. They always, a lot of times they change, you know. To, you what know. happened in the 70s and the 80s, you had so many people that are tomboys, they become adults, they grow out of it, and they become perfectly yeah. feminine women. Mm. More more so often, more feminine than uh, normal. A great example is uh, Shiloh Pitt, who is Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt's daughter, mm. was looking like a tomboy as a teen. Now she's extremely feminine, she's got long hair again and stuff. So, you know, a lot of teens go through this phase perfectly natural. Kylie Minogue and Neighbours. I just... Mm. I want to get into your head. Mm, I right. want to know what it was like, what thoughts were going through your mind as you decided you were going to become not just a woman, but a, you wanted to become a Korean woman. You've been to Korea. You like uh, South Korea, by the way. <laughs> not uh, North. No. And um, you probably wouldn't have come back if you'd gone there. Probably not. Not in one piece. Uh, so... <laughs> What was going through your mind at that time? A lot of confusion. So since a teen, I was uh, I felt like I was meant to be a girl. Uh, I didn't like the way I looked. Um, you know, I had a lot of insecurity issues, I had a lot of bullying. So as an adult, I thought, let me change that. So I just started just having surgeries to try and improve. I went to Korea, I had a nose surgery and mm. that actually went wrong. And then I had oh. more surgeries and they kept going wrong. So I was just wasn't satisfied. So I became almost addicted to that, started having more surgeries. That's what happens, isn't it? And that's what happens. And then I was like, hmm, I'm not happy. It must be because of the gender that I've always questioned. So then I had the uh, feminization and then I was happy for six months. So what happened? happened to make you suddenly realize because you did this right in the time when we were beginning to know you and interview mm. and have you on the program mm. and then uh, you disappeared for uh, six months or something you came back mm. and uh, you you got it all wrong yeah i needed some time to reflect so i went through this process i was considering going through more you know more invasive surgeries mm. on the body and then i was you know, just had an awakening like this isn't going to make me happy it's never made me happy it's always given me a temporary happiness which a lot of young people get so you had an epiphany moment I had an epiphany you know and i was like this isn't healthy to do this my whole life i'm going to end up dying on that anesthetic you know it's not mm -hmm. do you think something else drove this uh, some totally separate link uh, issue linked you to this Sort of I think because he came in and he met us. He met you. I think it was meeting you guys, not, yeah. You're not a beautiful yeah. once you saw James and me. Exactly. So <laughs> I thought, I need to be masculine like then James. Then you realise you're never going to get there. So. <laughs> Let's bring in a, a listener, a viewer. Janice in London. Hi, Janice. Why do I call us on that number? Yeah, all right. Hi. First of all, I want to say, James, you've been fabulous. You're really very good, and I love the guy that's with you. But why Ollie wants to be a woman, Ash. I cannot understand. Well, he doesn't. He's changed his mind. Well, that's it. But he's just stuck to being a man and get on with it. Well, Janice, are you listening to this? The whole point of this conversation is that Ollie, at one point, when we knew him some years ago, was adamant he wanted to become a woman. Well, he, and he, was, he got no. through all that, and now he is happy, he's, and he is so living he, his life as a man. So really, he's driven everybody completely mad, had all this surgery, and he's gone back to being a man. So exactly. Which is the whole point man. of this discussion, yeah, Janice, We're pointing to out. sort to sort yeah. out the fact that people of the age of 11 and sometimes yeah. younger are uh, given help to, uh, to change their sex is wrong. And the government is only just beginning to catch on to this... I don't know what is wrong with that. So Ollie can help the situation, Janice, can't he? By so Holly, stopping other people. Holly, Holly, <laughs> Holly is used to be on, Holly. No. on here tonight to help yeah. people understand this transitioning problem that we have in this country. 
because I, I did go for it myself, Janice, and um, I realised I regretted that and, you know, thought that's not right for me. I'm not happy. And you know, now I'm trying to educate people that, you know, we shouldn't be doing this to kids. You know, we should try and get kids to love themselves for who they are mm. rather than pushing them down this route. So I think, you know, that's an important message. But, you know, for me personally, it's, it's for many people, it's very easy to fall into this trap of uh, thinking that we should change mm. gender because it's pushed by Hollywood. It's pushed by the media. It's pushed on uh, social media. So there are a lot of pressure that lead these you know young people to fall into this well i think well really i think it's crazy because look he'd be a very good looking young man i don't and now he's not good looking he is a good looking janice thank you for your call uh, sometimes i worry but uh, i can't be responsible I'm still a man. for everything <laughs> to the beginning again. in the world can i maybe she thinks i'm still a woman well i don't well, know, i wasn't a woman but, i was but, trans but, uh, yeah. maybe we haven't have we not come we not explain it, it? <laughs> yeah yeah that that only uh, because that was right in the middle, and I thought, mm. yeah, I'll come, I'll come to a call in a moment, but I just want to clear this up a bit. So as we, we um, met each other, got to know each other, was, and you started coming on the programme as a mm. guy who had more uh, surgery than anyone else. In mm. fact, you became the person who'd had more facial surgery, I think, than anyone else. Mm. And um, it's too late for me, isn't it? <laughs> Never too late. Uh, Never too late, James. <laughs> The, f the fact is that you realised, mm. luckily, that you were going down a very scary path. And the reason we're talking about it now is to help people. You know, you might have a child at home. You might have a parent or you, whatever who's got the wrong end of the stick mm. and doesn't realise how dangerous to give a child mm. puberty blockers because they think at the age of 11 or 12 that they would like to become somebody of, of, of the opposite sex. They are not old enough to know that. And then they have operations, don't they? Which is even more serious. Yeah, and it's being, well, pushed, it's, it's being pushed uh, on kids. We see, you know, Hollywood, every single film these days, you know, you've got to tick a diversity box, non-binary yeah. tick. Hollyoaks, tick. Even, didn't we? we Hollyoaks, yeah. there was actually, yeah, trans that kids. And I thought that was actually very harmful because a kid's yeah. going to be watching that and they will actively change that yeah. person's life. Yeah. They will ruin that kid's life. So, is it driven by parents? Let's sometimes. take a couple. Well, ob pretty it's obvious. It's fashionable, isn't it? The parents, you know, the, par it, the parents are driving it, or they wouldn't allow it to happen, would they? Mm. Mm. Well, they don't have to tell your parents. Some parents, you? absolutely. Some parents do. Mm. They push it on the kid, but there are also parents that uh, see their kids struggling with something. The kid will have severe depression or something else, yeah. and they think uh. they're doing the best thing because the doctor says that, but it's not the case. Let's take mm. some calls. Uh, Muriel is in Hill Hempstead. Muriel. Hello. Hi. I'm just phoning up to say about um, the chat that's on the telly now on Talk TV. What are you phoning up for in, then? I'm phoning up to say what is he looks a lot nicer being a man. Good. Thank, thank you. you for your call. Oh, thank you. Uh, uh, she's Janet about me, in about West Yorkshire. Janet. Yeah. Yeah. Janet. Oh, well, I love my audience. Uh, Janet, good evening. Evening. Turn the flipping TV or radio off or down. Oh, or... sorry, I will, I will, well, well. <laughs> is is well. whoever's outside doing this, are you not asking very politely people who phone in to turn their TVs and radios oh, I'm down? So sorry, so sorry. I'm not talking, no, I'm, I'm just giving uh, one of our staff, who probably not going to be here much longer, uh, a bit of a telling off. Just Did you tell say... James, I love him to pieces. I've known him for years. Right. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he would not have been on any of this if it hadn't been for my husband, which is Ian Bolt. Oh, yeah, Ian Bolt. Janet! Janet. Surprise, surprise! Janet! It's Janet. It's Janet! No, no, but you don't even Are know who Janet funny? is. Janet, Janet was... Uh, sadly, Ian died some years ago, didn't he? Yes, um, he did. But he was a producer who took my radio show onto TV oh. on Yorkshire Television many years ago. Oh, bless you. James, thank you! That's all right. Uh, I watch it every week, and I keep thinking I'll phone you. Yeah. And, and... Uh, well, I'm glad you did, because I, I haven't spoken to you for years and years. No, and, and we have known you a yeah. lot of years, James. Yeah, and, and Ian was an amazing bloke. I, in fact... You know, he, he rang me one... Well, my agent rang me and said, I'd like you to talk to this man. Mm. No, it was Ian who rang me. And he said, I'm a producer at Yorkshire Television. I'd like to put your That's radio right. show on TV. Wow. Oh, uh, thank you. So I put the phone down and thought he was a nut. But... <laughs> <laughs> 
And then I rang my agent at the time. We're talking back in the ni uh, 80s, we're talking That's about. That's right. Yeah? Yes. And it was me that heard you on the radio and said to Ian, oh. you have got to listen to this man. So you're responsible for James wow. Wales' success, really. You're the reason so, we're all here. Yeah. I said to Ian, you have got to listen to this man. He's wonderful. Look, look what you've done, Janet. Look what you're <laughs> you responsible know, for. And I, we haven't spoken for years and years and years. I know. Oh, oh, we oh should. James, thank well, you. When I travel back up to Yorkshire, which I hopefully will do in the not-too-distant future, now I've got your phone number, somebody will take it down and give it to me when, when we leave. I will call you, OK? Oh, James, I'd love to see you again. Well, thank you so I much. I really, really, really Can you not would. do personal calls on her? Yeah. Thank you, Janet. Talk yeah. soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Can you not do your personal calls on here? Call her when we're not doing the show. You know, it's not really professional, is it, to, to chat to your mates? You know, I, I'm... What? Well, I was thinking about Ian the other day. Would you stop that? Well, I was saying, thinking yeah. about Ian the other day, strangely enough, and, yeah. and as I said, Ian died some years ago, and I haven't spoken to uh, Janet since then, hurtful, probably before it? then, wow. and life goes on. You just you know, life goes on. And well, you, you know, well that's what happens, isn't it? You go, well, I won't bother time. with Janet Annoying. anymore. She had to call you. <laughs> and this <laughs> stupid woman that's here, nice. who is she? Nice, that is. Said, yeah. leave Ash alone. He's funny. I don't find him funny. I'm I find not meant him to be funny. I find him hard hitting, hard hitting journalist. Can I, can I just say thanks, Janet, very much indeed. In the days, Ian wouldn't have had this on. We'd have had somebody attractive on. But, <laughs> like you know, I, f I find it difficult now to... Uh, on your cookie now. That, oh. This is long before cookie. Oh, yeah. um, Richard, you would like to ask uh, Ollie a question. Go right ahead. No, I'd like to ask you a question, actually, James. Oh, um, all right, ask me. Go on. Sorry to, to be quite direct, but when you snuff it, will you let Ash take over the show? No. Because I quite like Ash. No, I won't. No. Thank you very much indeed for your care and concern, Richard, and I'll sod off. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, yeah. but oh, I uh, I I've was, already put I mean, into my will. Break happened. it to me gently. Mm. Um, okay, so wh where do we go from here? Why, or should I take a commercial break? I'm completely lost. Five minutes. Okay, five minutes left. Um, where do we go from here? Will now people realise that puberty blockers are something that have to be stopped? I mean, will will there be a ruling about this, or will the NHS carry on and say, "Oh no, we think sometimes it will be a good thing." Well, the NHS has al already said that they will stop puberty blockers for kids under 16 except in clinical trials. So we've seen progress. Uh, Liz Truss even introduced a bill into Parliament to mm. try and get it, you know, all these things back Trial? They're going to do trials with kids, though? Uh, yes, yeah, still clinical trials. That's terrible. Um, experimenting. So it's, it's not a complete what? ban. It is experimenting. But um, So we are seeing progress. And then the CAST report, there was the study in the Netherlands, long-term data. And, of course, we saw all these LGBT groups have suddenly backtracked and backpedalled which is a good sign because it shows that, you know, we are actually yes. winning. We are actually speaking it's turning, for kids. Isn't it? The worm is the turning. The tide is turning yeah. and we can protect these kids. Mm. Yeah, mm. Man. Do you know, I, I, I wonder how this, the whole trans issue, uh, as I said before, it's a minority of a minority. Mm. And I just wonder how it suddenly got mm. into such a prominent position where... You know, big companies are now falling to it. Oh, you can't call her. It's very sinister it, how it sort it, yeah, of it, crept it's up. And... The worst thing ever. I blame a lot of it on diversity departments mm. and businesses. Mm. I think I would get rid of every... Sorry if you're in a diversity department. There must be a better job. Um, I, would, I would get rid of a lot of them because they have actually done... They started to try and make it look as if that was perfectly mm. OK. Uh, Margaret's in Reading. Margaret, you've got a question for Ollie. Yeah, um, no, actually, for James, uh, to say hi to James and Ash. All right, I'll um, tell them. Thank you, Margaret. Sarah in... Um, Worthing. Woking. Worthing. Is it? Oh, Worthing. Worthing. Right. Worthing. Uh, Sarah Hello, in Worthing. Worthing, I need new glasses. Hello. <laughs> um, yeah, I thought I'd ring in. I have rang in before. I don't know if Ash will remember me. Um, when you were like with um, the other guys. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm the mum of... Um, of a parent, um, a parent, You're sorry, of a parent. Will you now be quiet? I don't want your... <laughs> yeah, your, your, your You're your parent's mother. I don't want your girlfriends <laughs> ringing the show. Uh, <laughs> because no, I'm running no, out... I have a trans-identifying child who's um, right. 16. Yeah. And so um, I never seem to hear parents ringing up that are affected by this. No, they don't. So 
So here I am, but I'm a little bit nervous, sorry. Well, don't, listen, don't be nervous. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get talk, through the quick either. Talk to, well, we've gone through, because we're trying to get people on this section who just want to talk to Ollie, but so many people trying to get on getting through is mm. when you've only got half well, a person talk, doing it. Um, well, I can talk to Ollie. Um, yeah. Ollie, I think it's great that you, after seeming like one of the extreme influencers mm. online, mm. Um, that you are... You, you are now advocating um, quite rightly for the kids um, and even vulnerable adults. But a lot of people just talk about the children, but mm. I think... How are you managing, mm. Sarah, if I can ask, how yeah. are you managing uh, with your trans son, is it? It is, yeah. yeah. Biological, biological mm. female. Bi right, yeah, OK. But, well, he, he, uh, but I am going to refer to him as he, because yeah. I do... I support him. But I want to know as parents that the treatment that he gets is suitable for him, that mm. it's the right thing to do. And it's been going on for a few years now, ever since it all kind of kicked off with the TikTok influencers yeah. and stuff like that. Does he have friends so, that are doing it as well? Because it often happens as... Oh, quite, God, everyone... It's become a youth it's, culture, it's I think. It's very a, worrying. This it's become it? a trend, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. And it's all. it seems to be mostly girls as well. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, you know, the boys... That he he's autistic, so he doesn't really have many friends in real life. But he talks to ones online, and I do keep him safe. Don't worry. Mm. Um, all the boys are, are what they call cis. You know, by that they consider themselves the sex they were born as. I think most of the girls that he talks to are all around the same age, all around that teenager age, same age as him. And most of them identify as trans or non-binary mm. or and that's just strange i mean obviously like attracts like he's got mm. autism um and he's ha got had mental health problems and still still does um and so the kids that he's speaking to are probably kind of the same you know all autistic mental health problems and things like that and they seem to be the kids that are affected so he's drawing them in so i'm sure it's not every mm. girl <laughs> you know in the world is but it's quite horrifying. He gets me. attention from it. Do you think that's because you, you sound like you don't really believe you have to support them, but you don't really believe it yourself? You do. Is a, a parent you have I to support? Your well, children. not really. You could. I mean, well, yeah. Yeah. No, but you, you notice the signs as a parent, basically, that it's it seems like a trend because obviously you said uh, the TikTok was a big influence. Then his group of friends, and like you said, you know. Uh, he is autistic. Uh, autistic kids are six times more likely to identify as trans. Um, there have been studies that have uh, shown that. And I think, you know, a lot of these kids, they just want to fit in. So, you know, a lot of autistic kids, um, you know, uh, struggle with uh, social interactions. They mm. struggle with making friends. So, you know, coming out as yeah. trans or non-binary can be a way for them it's to try It's a lot bigger percentage than the population. Included. Like it is, it yeah. is. So, you know, as, yeah. a, as a parent, I completely understand it's, uh, you know, you want it your kid very, to be happy. It's of course. I don't believe it mm. with him. It, it's just that he may be. Mm. Um, because he's always, you know, he's not, you know, other than when he was very, very young, once he started to be able to make his own decisions about mm. what he wanted to do in his own clothes and things like that, and it... it he took himself out of my hands like they do. Yeah. Um, you know, he's always been a bit more alternative and a bit more um, tomboy-like. So mm. maybe he is, um, but maybe he isn't. And um, what what is concerning me is how, you know, to, to get the bigger picture so it's just not a personal thing. Have you been told of the dangers, though, of hormone, you know, uh, in, in interfering with so, and the physical no. operations? Well, they should so, tell you all. I, um, I know no. about it all because I... As soon as he told me, mm. when he told me, uh, going back a few years, I did not realise the situation. Mm. And so I supported him, you know, um, called him his name, he, him pronouns, and, you know, um, and put to, took him to the GP to get him referred for um, the, the clinic for mm. gender transition. Luckily, there's a waiting list. As, is as, is as there, as, sorry, you know, sorry to interrupt. To Sarah, mm, sorry. Now, yeah, Ollie, is there some advice that you could just mm. give Sarah for the future? So, yeah, Sarah, my advice would be obviously, I understand as a parent, you just want your kid to be happy, and you know, uh, there are a lot of you know girls that are like tomboyish and stuff, so that's a perfect number. But yeah, I would say, you know, whatever you do is hold off on any of these hormones or puberty blockers or anything like that mm. until. Uh, you know, they are much, much older just because uh, we see many of these uh, young kids, which, you know, as the doctor would have said, it's gender dysphoria. Uh, they do actually grow out of it. So, you know, there are, of course, mm. uh, 
kids that will grow into adults and they will be perfectly happy being trans but there are a large number Sarah, that do grow out of it so my so, advice would be just to hold on yeah. off on all of that 